Hey, Malaya here at IT Supplies. Are you the proud owner of a new Epson F170 and you're looking to get the best quality prints out of the box? Well, this is the video for you. In this video, we will show you the best print driver settings when printing out of Adobe Photoshop. We will be using Photoshop in this particular video, but these settings can also be applied to Corel Draw and other professional photo editing software. Now we're going to throw it over to Jim, our resident color specialist. Hello, my name is Jim Ami and I'm the color specialist here at IT Supplies. And today I'm going to go over how to use the print settings for the Epson F170 dye sublimation printer. Um, for today we're going to be using Photoshop. Um, you can use something like Corel Draw or Lightroom. Um, most photo applications uh, will be utilizing like the Adobe Color Engine or Corel has their own color engine, um, but will be a little bit more accurate than printing out of, um, let's just say the simple Windows Picture Facts Viewer or the, um, uh, you know, just the regular Photos app on a Mac, right? So, um, and, and the reason for this is because you're gonna use the Adobe Color Engine as opposed to Macintosh's Color Engine or Apple's or Windows Color Engine. It's gonna be a little bit more accurate. Okay, so I just brought in a regular RGB image here, one of my sample files that I like to print. And we'll go ahead and go right to the print dialog. So I'll go to File and Print. And as you can see here, the image is a little bit larger um, than my media size, which I believe is set to 8.5 by 11. Um, one of the easy things I can do in here is to just scale and fit it to the media. So it's going to be on that 8.5 by 11 sheet there. If you need to crop for the size that you need for your substrates, um, you can do that in Photoshop uh, the regular way you would do that. Okay. Okay, so we've got our size here. Um, the other thing that I, I want to mention here is that with Photoshop, even with Corel Draw, you're going to see an initial window like this. I usually call this the Photoshop side of the driver. And then under the print settings is where you're going to have the Epson print driver settings. Okay. Um, in order to get the most accuracy here, uh, I believe it's best to choose Photoshop manages color as, a bo as opposed to printer manages color. Uh, for that reason that I gave earlier, Photoshop manages color will use the Adobe color engine, which would be a little bit more accurate than um, having the printer doing the color management for you. And then the other thing you have to choose here is the printer profile. And with this printer, it comes with two um, printer profiles. Uh, one is for rigid and one is for textile or fabric. So rigid for hard substrates, your metal, your mugs, um, license, uh, you know, uh, license tags, things like that. Uh, business card holders, uh, Christmas ornaments, anything uh, hard surface, you'll want to use the rigid profile. Uh, and anything with fabric, you'll use the textile profile. One of the things is the rigid profile will drop less ink. So if you were to use the rigid profile on a textile, the textile will look dull. If you were to use the textile profile, which uses more ink for fabric on a hard substrate, um, you might squash some of your details because um, you are dropping more ink than you would need for a hard substrate. So keep that in mind um, when you're choosing these two profiles here. And then after you've chosen your profile, we'll just say rigid for this in particular, um, you do want to choose your rendering intent. And a lot of um, photographers I know like to use relative color metric, but because this is a four color printer, um, perceptual is going to be the best rendering intent um, for the best results for dye sublimation. And so after we've done that, we can move over to um, the print settings on the Epson side and as you can see here you could choose your document size um, you can user define that as well and then um, you'll choose your paper type so if you're on a hard uh, surface you're going to want to use the rigid paper type if you're on a fabric or soft surface you're going to want to use the textile paper type okay and then quality is up to you but obviously the high quality is going to produce better results um, a little bit sharper especially on hard substrates and then you can choose how many copies you would like. Um, other print driver aspects are here as well. Um, and then you can also check to, if you want to see a preview of your image uh, that's going to be printed. 
And then the next thing um, under here is the more options tab. And so under the more options tab, you can see I could, I could reduce or enlarge my document from here. Um, and then I can set the color correction. If you set it to automatic, if you have automatic, this is where you are going to have printer managing the color as opposed to Photoshop managing the color in, photo, in the Photoshop side of the driver. And then under custom, you'll use the Photoshop manages color, choose your profile here. And then under advanced, you want to choose no color adjustment. And the reason is, is because Photoshop is going to do the color management, we don't want the printer also doing the color management. It'll be double color managed and the colors will be um, pretty far off from what you're expecting. So this is a very important step when you're having Photoshop manage the color. Make sure to turn off the color adjustment in the printer driver. And then the last thing um, that I'd like to mention in terms of print quality is this bi-directional printing button. So I would only use bi-directional printing if I was going to a soft substrate, you know, or a fabric. Um, because of the texture of the fabric that will hide um, any unsharpness that would be there from bi-directional printing. So the printer would be dropping ink in both ways from right to left and then left to right. Um, so it is faster that way. Um, but when you're on a hard substrate, if you're looking for finer detail and sharper dots, then you do want to have this unchecked so that it will only lay dots down in one direction. Um, the other thing here for mirror image is kind of a standard default for dye sublimation. As you're going to be flipping the sheet onto the substrate, you will want to mirror it so that it is the right orientation when it's um, finished being sublimated. If you wanted to save your settings so that you don't have to um, rigid, um, you know, set them each time, you could just take the settings that you have there and then save that and all of the settings that you've selected um, you'll be able to utilize so if I wanted to go to rigid substrate I could just double click on that and then it'll use all of my same settings the last thing I'd like to show you is under maintenance um, you do have um, the ability to do nozzle check prints directly from this driver as well as cleanings if your nozzle check prints are broken that means not all not all your nozzles are firing um, which will obviously affect the color so we do want to make sure our print head is clear. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to show you is under extended settings here. And uh, basically, this is one slider that you can utilize based on your own visual judgment of whether you feel like if the, the image is too flat on the material, you can boost the ink a little bit by raising the ink density up as much as 20%. And if you felt like it was too much ink for your material, maybe your details are, are not as fine um, and it could be due to over inking, then you could reduce your ink density um, to accommodate for that. Okay, so this is basically your, your main option for um, allowing for how much ink to be dropped on a material essentially. So um, other than that, I think that pretty much covers the main parts of the driver so let's go ahead and see our print preview here and so I can go ahead to print here and it should bring up my preview and you can see my preview it's showing how it's going to be oriented on the sheet I can go ahead and click print and it'll go ahead and print my image for me and I can go ahead and sublimate that onto the substrate of my choice we hope this tutorial has been informative and has helped you improve your print quality. If you are looking to buy an Epson F170, you'll find a link to our website in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any content like this.